A few weeks ago, for those of you who watch the show regularly, will remember that we had a gentleman on the show who told us the story of how he and his wife were taken aboard a flying saucer. Now, in the past several years, there have been many similar stories of which some have been explained. However, there have been many sightings of unidentified flying objects which can't be explained by natural phenomena. So today we have with us a scientist who has been a leading uh, astronomer for over 25 years. He has some very definite ideas on what flying saucers are and where they come from. And I know we're all going to be delighted to meet him. So welcome him, please, Dr. I. M. Levitt. No, this is fine. I'll put the doctor right here, okay? Do you believe there are <clears throat> such a thing as a flying saucer? Well, I believe there are unidentified flying objects. If you call them flying saucers, this is your definition but of you don't, you don't think they're flying saucers? Well, uh, I believe people are seeing things. This is the first thing we start with. <laughs> they're seeing things, but I think in most cases we can explain what they are seeing as the operation of a natural law. In a very few cases, we might find that these are not the operation of a uh, I should say these are the operation of a natural law of which we have no knowledge as yet. You know, if we knew everything there was to know about uh, science, we could close up our universities, our, uni our colleges, our research organizations. And obviously, we are still going to school. We're still learning a great deal. Indeed. And so, our 21st century science is going to be far beyond our 20th century science, and our 22nd century science will be far beyond that. And so we have gotten into a realm where we are projecting into the future, and we are trying today to explain phenomena, perhaps of which we have no knowledge. And this well, may be the... the but if this is a phenomenon that's been around, say, that we just don't explain, why is it only in the last several years that people have started to talk about seeing them? Well, this they is a, seen them years ago? Well, this is gen a general fallacy. You know, the French saw flying saucers back in the 18th century. Uh, the English saw the famous Durham lights in the 19th century. In the 20th century, we in this country see them. And apparently, there's a Ph.D. thesis in this for some psychology now, student. <laughs> Doctor, you just call them flying saucers, and you corrected me when I said it. See how easy you slip into that? <laughs> uh, all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> have you ever seen one, sir? No, I have not. This is the thing that bothers me. Why discriminate against me? <laughs> you know, uh, people are seeing things, and uh, some scientists or some astronomers have two, three, four, but there are about 2,000 of them. Well, why does it have to be someone taking a date home at 3 o'clock in the morning of the milkman to see these things and uh, not me? Uh, uh, there have been some commercial pilots who have seen Precisely. Them. Yes, uh, commercial pilots. No, no, no. <laughs> but it, here again, we get back to the thing that I started off with when I started set my cards up. These people are seeing things. We cannot explain what they are seeing for two reasons. One is their definition, their description is not good enough. And two is that their description is perfect, and their, uh, what they tell us is perfect. We do not know under what laws these things operate. Now, let me give you an example of that. We have radiation belts around the Earth. They've been around the Earth for five billion years. We never knew it until we sent Explorer 1 up in January of 1958, and suddenly we know their radiation belts. There's a solar wind moving out from the sun doing all sorts of tricks, the comets to the magnetic field of the Earth and so on. We never knew that until 1960 when Pioneer went out. And so all around us, on the Earth, off in space, we have the operation of natural laws of which we have no knowledge. And I would guess, I would speculate that most of the sightings which cannot be explained but which come to us from skilled observers like airline pilots and people of that, in that caliber or that category, these are the operation of the, unna of the natural laws of which we have no knowledge. But uh, how, uh, how do you explain all these pictures that have uh, appeared? Well, I would guess thought. most of them are fakes and phonies. If I were a photographer setting out to show you a picture of a flying saucer with a skill I have as a photographer, I could really conjure up a Lulu. And so I think that most of them are uh, phony. There are some which 
apparently are not. Uh, the one that the Coast Guardsmen made up in Connecticut, uh, uh, four blobs of stuff out there, this is a genuine picture. This man photographed it. Now, if you ask me, well, what was it he photographed again? I say, I don't know what it is that he photographed because uh, we just don't know. Well, now, why is it that most of the sightings have been in the United States? There have been a couple. Uh, there was one in Scotland, as I recall. Why are most of them in this country, not in other countries? Have well, there been any in Austria? Excuse me. Uh, pardon me? Uh, any in Austria? Has anyone ever yeah, seen them? They saw that too. Sure. In they all yeah. seen them? And in France, yeah. they see them all well, over, but not with the intensity that we have. And I think this is a tribute to our remarkable press and radio, our news media, because if something happens out in, say, Texas at, uh, oh, let's say, 120, at 125, we are hearing about it in Philadelphia, and so the tremendous uh, grasp of the news media today has perpetuated and has uh, uh, disseminated this and has perpetuated this. And so that's a tribute. Well, how do you explain the story that was in Life magazine, for instance, that two people were abducted? Remember the story? Yes. And, uh, well, and sure. put in the flying saucer, and, and, and they came back. Now, what sort of a thing? Well, is I personally doubt this. But with a magazine like Life Magazine? I, was, uh, I think it was Well, Look or Life or any of them. Now, uh, the one thing you must... The <laughs> one thing that you must remember all. is that uh, this is newsworthy. Look, Life, The Post, our newspapers, they are interested in selling papers, magazines, or books. But doctor, we had this man on the show, and he was an articulate, bright man, and uh, why did you doubt something like that? Well, my, uh, my doubts uh, concerning these people who have been in the flying saucers, and I have been on a, a show with someone from North Jersey, who incidentally was on a flying saucer from Venus, and he married a Venusian girl, which turned out to be a magnificently beautiful blonde. Well, uh... But that were, already sounds Well, did he bring him back, this fellow? <laughs> did he bring him back with him when he left the van? No, she was here. I saw her. But, uh, as I say, tremendous, tremendous What does she look like, this girl? Hey, beautifully stacked blonde. What else can I tell you? Okay, stacked. I'm Dr. We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, Doctor, we'd like to show our audience and you uh, a picture taken February 26, 1955, with an 8 millimeter. Uh, it was a motion picture camera. And here's a still of this. Mrs. Uh, Rodifer uh, took this in Maryland. Looks like the Batmobile. Now you tell me. She says this is an authentic flying saucer. Now, what do you think that Who is? Who authenticated it? <laughs> Mr. Rodifer. I don't <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I uh, I would doubt that uh, this is, quote, authentic, end quote, flying saucer or unidentified flying object. This is too pat. When you you provide uh, for me amorphous things, which I cannot precisely describe, I might go along with you as being the picture of a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. But when you give it to me with these hard lines, I find it very, very difficult to accept. Mike, may we get back to this yes. joker and the flying sa saucer? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I was on a show with this chap who apparently had been on a flying saucer from Venus. And uh, he told us about his experiences, and I sat there and waited until he had finished. And then I asked one question, and the question goes along these lines. If there any spaceship to come to the Earth means they have achieved a technological stature far beyond where we are today, perhaps where we will be in the year 2000, perhaps where we'll be in the year 2100 A.D. Therefore, all of their technology must have kept pace with this. And for instance, if you take me into a spaceship like that, I will see the shape of things that come in terms of food, clothes, furniture, uh, propulsion, uh, all, all types of things. And so I asked him a very simple question. Now, describe the inside of this ship to me. And I told him this, and I said, it better be good. And he never said a word. He stared right out at the audience and never said a word. And so when this chap maybe was they, on maybe your... Maybe put the whammy on him up Well, there. when this chap who was on... <laughs> the show with you, uh, if he says he wasn't a flying saucer, I would like to pose precisely the same question to him. 
explain to me and describe to me the operations of this device, he claims, which is so far in the future. He claims to have been unconscious at the time. Yeah, the wife claimed that she saw everything. That was what was so weird. She did. And also, they gave him a physical examination. At least the wife. The, they read, I read somewhere about physical one, examination. Too. Now, uh, uh, let's go ahead in 10 years, 10 or 15 years. Now, right here on the earth, Mike, I believe that in 10 or 15 years, they're going to put someone like yourself in some sort of a cubicle. I hope and so. they are not going to. <laughs> I'll be ready for it in ten years. I don't want to be in a cubicle. Well, well, forgive me, forgive me. We will lie, oh, lay you on a nice, smooth, hard bed. Oh, you mean that? If you have a bad cold. back, we'll put oh. you on a hard bed. <laughs> and <clears throat> we will be able to take a complete medical, subject you to a complete medical examination, perhaps without putting a thing on you, because the senses, the sophisticated senses that we will be using on the human being. Uh, you mean you'll be able such. to take a blood count? You will be able to take pressure, pulse. temperature, pulse, uh, perhaps the operation of X-ray. internal organs and so on, and no one will put a finger on you, but somebody will monitor a, a, a set of dials and will be able to give you that. Now, if these people are in a spaceship which has come in from this outer, outer region, and they're so far ahead of us they must be in order to be able to do this, do you mean to say they're going to give them an examination the way we do it today in our own hospitals? I doubt this. I, I can't hold still I'll be for happy that. when that, that machine comes along so we get away from those doctors who keep those stethoscopes in the refrigerator. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much it's going to cost. <laughs> well, it probably will cost a lot less than it costs today because you know, the most expensive thing is labor and there won't be any... Uh, well, they were associated with this. Of course, there'd be well, a lot of think? nice jobs lost. <laughs> Do you think there is any other intelligent life in outer space? Yes, I think there's an infinity of intelligent life in outer space, and I believe most of it, and by outer space, I mean a way out in space, not in our own solar system, but beyond that. There's an infinity of life out there, and I think most of it is a good bit more intelligent than the life we have here on the Earth. And the reason for that is that our sun is a relatively new star. And some four or five billion years after the star comes into being, if it has a planetary system, a form of life uh, is generated or evolves on that, uh, on that planetary system. And so if we are a relatively new star, and uh, most of them are older than we are, then I would imagine these other civilizations... Uh, go far beyond where we are today. Do you think we've ever been visited by any of these beings from other planets? It is quite possible that we have been visited. I think it was Thomas Gold who, uh, I think uh, uh, he is the man, he's an astrophysicist up at Cornell, who said, it is conceivable that a long, long time ago, perhaps several billion years ago, a spaceship came in from another uh, planetary system and they sat down on the earth looking around and why how disgusting what a sterile planet this is well let's visit it again in a couple of billion years and they took what they had to in terms of supplies and whatever else they needed and of course like uh, the average picnicker when he's ready to leave he tosses everything out of the car and out of the spaceship may have gone the uh, apple cores and banana peels and the tomatoes and so on and if they did, it is conceivable that uh, we may have evolved from something like that. I agree, because I have an uncle I know who's from out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be right back. <laughs>